line, folks in the room, uh, we are we are pleased to have Jason from Samsung down here. He's one of their national trainers. Um, it's got a, a very good presentation today featuring SUHD as well as UHD TV, uh, the entire Samsung line, including some audio products. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Jason. Thank you, Mark, and good morning, everybody. We have a little bit smaller group in here, and hello to all of uh, those of you who are out there on the phone and watching the presentation part of this. I apologize that I cannot show you the 9500 series that we have uh, sitting here in front of us for everybody to look at, um, but welcome. And my goal is over the next hour, hour and 15 minutes or so for all of you to walk out of this room with a much better understanding of SUHD, just what it is and what it could do. Uh, as well as talking about our new smart hub and smart operating system and some of its features, and then we will dig into audio a little bit. Now, I've, I've literally got a couple hours worth of product info to cram into the next little bit, so I will do my best to get through it quickly and efficiently. And any of those of you who are in the room here, uh, if you have any questions or want me to slow down or back up, please don't hesitate to raise your hand, or even just since there's not that many of you, just sort of call out, don't worry, you won't uh, offend me or so, we're going to talk about a pretty cool new product, the SUHD. And I'd like to start talking about it by taking a quick look back at 2014, just to, to highlight what a great year it was for us at Samsung. Um, this represents the number of TVs sold in the U.S. And you can see on here that uh, Samsung was far and away the market share leader when it came to TVs sold in the U.S. last year. Um, 2015 is expected to be no different. In fact, our goals have grown, uh, and a lot of last year's success and a lot of this year's hopes are, or projections are attributed to what you guys are able to do and what you're able to sell out to your customers. So thank you very much for all of that, and hopefully after today we'll all be well equipped to drive uh, the continued message of Samsung success and Samsung innovation. Now, if you look at the past and what Samsung has been able to do with TV and with, with innovations, um, it, it, it goes a ways back. All the way back to LED. We were the first manufacturer to actually brand a TV as using LED lighting. Then moving into 3D, the smart TV platforms that we've come up with uh, and expanded upon, and then into the UHD picture story. Last year, we introduced curved panel TV, and this year, we are talking about SUHD. Now, what does S mean? We know what UHD means, right? If you don't, we'll get to that in about 25 slides or so. But what does the S part of this mean? Now, if you know Samsung product at all, maybe you know our tab lineup. We've got something called a Tab S. Maybe you know our wearables. You've heard of the Galaxy Gear S, which is a watch. If you don't know any of those, I'm pretty sure you know our phones. You've heard of the Galaxy S3, the S4, the S5. We do. Uh, and there's even a newly announced Galaxy S6 that's coming out. So we've used this S moniker before, and what it means is it's the top of the line. It's a flagship model for us. So S means premium, all right? When you're talking to your customers, they're looking for the best TVs that they can bring in to sell to their consumers. They want SUHD because it's the best of what Samsung has to offer, and Samsung is far and away the leader in whatever it comes to when it, we're talking TVs. So digging into SUHD, just what it is and just what it does, we've got a pretty big story to sell here. All right? and we are going to find a feature of SUHD that's going to match whatever it is the consumer is looking for. If they're looking for picture quality, which is far and away the number one determining factor in why people buy what they buy, SUHD has an amazing picture story to sell. If they're looking for the connected experience, what they can do with the TV, what they can connect it to, what they can share with it, we've got an interaction experience that goes above and beyond what other TVs or other manufacturers are able to sell. If you've got somebody who could care less about what the TV looks like when it's on, could care less about what they could connect it to and what they can do with, they just care about how good the TV looks, and it stopped. Uh, we've got a very good design story to sell. Mark, that's exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> uh, and then we've also got a content story to sell. So what exactly am I going to be able to watch on my SUHD TV? We've got a really big story to sell in terms of content. Now this is not just one TV for us. This is a lot of TVs. We've got several different series and several different sizes of TVs from the SUHD lineup. 
And if you guys know Samsung at all, if you've been around long enough, you realize that we are now at the end of March. There's still an awful lot of time left in 2015, and if I were to come back in November, this lineup will probably look a lot different. There'll probably be another series or two up there, and there'll be more sizes. That's uh, correct. correct. Just how Samsung tends to go. But this is what we've got now, this is what's been announced, and this is what will be coming out uh, here with Product Watch in 2015. So, we're going to start off by talking about picture quality. Because although we said we've got lots of things to talk about with SUHD, picture quality is the, the hero of heroes when it comes to TV. Now, if you look at what other TV technologies have done in the past, they've typically done one thing well. Plasma did contrast really well. Well, plasma did motion really well, too, but we'll stick with contrast. LEDs have done color really well. LCD, when it was introduced, did brightness really well. OLED, which you guys may have heard of, which is a newer technology, does black level really well. SUHD does all of those things really well. In fact, it does them better than other TV technologies. So when we're selling picture quality and why, our, why your customers would want to carry SUHD is because it is the best of everything when it comes to TV technologies. From brightness to color to contrast and to detail, this is the TV that they'll be able to sell to consumers that will provide the best in class picture quality experience. Looking at what all that means, yeah, if there's somebody that has a phone that's on that's not on mute, please mute it. Okay. So it begins with hardware. All right. The SUHD uses a completely different light structure than other LED backlit TVs. Yes, this is an LED lit TV. If you look at the top of my slide here, you see what conventional LED TVs look like in terms of the bulbs. It's this right here, which is a blue light that's then coated with a yellow phosphor. The result of that is an uneven peak in the reds, the greens, and the blues. Still going to produce pretty good color, we've all seen them before, but in terms of the exact spectrum and the exact um, wavelengths, the colors that are being produced, it's a little bit off. If you look at what SUHD does, we actually are able to use a true blue LED bulb without the phosphor on it. The lights then shine through, use your imaginations for a second, it doesn't look exactly <laughs> like this. But in the middle there you see what's called a nanocrystal. <coughs> All right, this is what's going to produce the color spectrum, the color, bright, uh, the color uh, accuracy that we're able to get out of this TV. The peaks and the reds and the greens and the blues in terms of the wavelengths are much more accurate using a true blue light and then using this nanocrystal layer. Now when I say nanocrystals, imagine if you will, they are actually red and green particles. They are about one ten thousandth the thickness of a strand of hair. So there's literally trillions of them inside the panel of one of these TVs. When you shine a blue light through a nanocrystal layer that contains red and green semiconductor particles, the result is a pure white light. That's what's needed to have those matching arcs in the color spectrum. And this is what SUHD is doing. All right. So what does this look like in terms of the TV layer? On the left here, you're seeing conventional TV. On the right, you are seeing there in the middle the nanocrystal film that's put in that the light shines through. And you see the end result from the color reproduction here to the color reproduction there that we are able to really maximize the spectrum with the nanocrystal layer. Now, what does it look like in terms of prior TV technologies, prior lighting systems? At the top, you see fluorescent, which would have been LCD, and how the color waves look kind of messy, because in fact they were. And then moving into standard LED, it does get cleaned up an awful lot, but there's still some banding there, especially in between the, uh, the blue and the green and the green and the red. And there's a lot of those sub shades that are mixed up and left out versus the nanocrystal LED where it flows perfectly from the blues all the way down to the reds. You're able to get in a whole lot more of the full color spectrum, the full capabilities of what TVs can produce by using that blue light and using that nanocrystal film. End of the day, you're going to have more color built into the TV. So if you have customers who want to sell 
color. They think color is what drives people to TVs. We're going to be able to do it with SUHD. Now, it goes above and beyond actually just using a blue light and using this nano crystal film. All of the SUHD TVs actually use something called a 10 bit color panel. Does anybody in this room know what that is? Does anybody know what conventional TVs use without looking at the slide? They use an 8 bit color panel. Now, if we want to talk about something that your customers can wrap their heads around and that they can then get their consumers to really wrap their heads around, the SUHD, because it uses a 10-bit panel, is able to produce 64 times more color than conventional TV or anything else that's on the market today. Now, what 64 times means in terms of a number, this is an 8-bit panel, which is all the other Samsung TVs you've ever sold and the other manufacturer's TVs that you've sold. They can produce 256 shades each of red, green, and blue, which are the colors that TVs produce, which when combined together equal about 17 million colors. That's pretty impressive. Until you look at what a 10-bit panel can produce, we get up into almost 1.1 billion shades of color. Now, whether or not we totally grasp what that means, when we're able to say to somebody who's selling this TV, look, it's 64 times the amount of color. That means you're going to be able to see reds you've never seen before. You're going to be able to see greens you've never seen before in TV. You're going to have this TV at home, and it's going to provide you with the viewing experience you're used to in a movie theater, much more so than any other TV. That's what they'll be able to wrap their heads around, and that's what people will be able to understand. 64 times the amount of color with the SUHD that we get over a conventional TV. Everybody follow that part of it? Excellent. Is there that many colors? Yes. There's actually more. There is? Yeah. So it's not going to make it look fake? No. You're seeing 10-bit color in the demo loop right here. Does it look fake or does it look real? It's much more accurate to what we are used to seeing in real life. Yeah. And I've actually, I didn't think about the other group, but I've got some remastered movie content meant to match the specs of this TV that we can show at the end if you guys want to see what it, when I say it's much more cinematic-like than 8-bit panel TV, we can show that at the end. So, talking about that, now, is there a lot of content out there meant to match the specs for this TV? Well, most content that is being broadcast right now or streamed right now is coming through in 8-bit color format. However, the TV does have a remapping engine, so it's able to take the incoming signal. Not only does it do resolution upscaling, but it also does color remapping. So we're able to get the full benefits of the 10-bit capabilities in this TV out of everything. Moving on into brightness. You guys have been in a retail store before, you've looked at TVs, which one do you go to first? The brightest one. Whether that's the correct thing to do or not, it's just what we do. Our eyes are attracted to what's bright. And the SUHD TVs will be significantly brighter than anything else on a retail sales floor. So if you're talking to your customers, ask them that question. You want, you want a brighter TV because that's what people are going to buy? I've got one that's significantly brighter than everything else. All right? There is hardware and software that drives this process for the SUHD. We talked about the different lights that we're using, the cell structure in them, the lighting mechanism altogether is a little bit different. The SUHD has better what's called light transmittance, which is the ability to pass light through the layers of the panel. It's 37% better, in fact. And then there's also a software process that's able to reassign light to different areas of the screen. So if we've got areas that are meant to be dark, like you see the scenes there with the bridge, you've got a, a dead black sky behind the bridge that's meant to be really light, we're able to take power that's not used in the areas of the screen that are dark, and then it reassigns it, or you can say harvest, there's lots of different terms you can use, and then pushes that power into the areas of the screen that are meant to be bright, so we get an extra kick in the brighter areas. So not only is it brighter, it's actually more efficient. This 65-inch SUHD TV is going to run at the same uh, power capacity as last year's 65-inch UHD TVs, even though it's going to be significantly that's saying an awful lot about the, uh, the technology that's built into the TV. So, when we're talking about reassigning energy, we're talking about better light transmittance. One of the benefactors of that is contrast. And if you guys ever read any reviews on TVs, if you follow any 
video file critics, the be all end all of picture quality is contrast, which is the ability to produce white and black in the same scene and have them both be incredibly accurate. With the light transmittance, which is what we showed in the top of that last slide, that's 37% better on this TV because of the panel structure and the new style of lights we're using. What we're able to do is turn the backlight down on the TV without sacrificing brightness. When the backlight is lower, it means that the blacks are going to be more pure and they're going to be more accurate. And without sacrificing brightness, it means you're still going to have the incredibly crisp, bright whites. So you've got that maximum end of the contrast spectrum. All right? So we've now covered color. How many more times uh, expressions of color will this TV be able to produce? 64. 64. That's an awful lot. It's also going to be significantly brighter, which is going to attract people at retail. And then it's also got the contrast story to sell. So there you're knocking out all the other things that TV techno other TV technologies do individually well, and the SUHD does all of them well. Now, this demo loop that you guys are seeing right here that everybody's paying attention to is amazing. This is actually embedded into the TV. So if you've got customers who want to be able to have something that's going to sell this TV at retail, this is there. It's built in. All they've got to do is have the TV on display, pop it into store demo mode, and the content will autoplay. The same loop runs on all of the SUHD TVs. The UHDs will have their own embedded content, and as I understand it, I haven't seen one yet, but the actual 1080p TVs will have embedded content this year too. So you won't get your customers calling up saying, hey, do you have any of those Samsung gun drives, or can you call a Samsung guy and get them to send me something? It's all already built into the TV. So they're gonna have all this to show at retail, and you, know, you guys can see how good it looks. At retail, it will, uh, it will really pop. So here's a pretty interesting slide, and this is another technology that's out there today um, that's very highly touted and very widely reviewed, and very highly reviewed for that matter. This is OLED. You guys familiar with what OLED is? All right. o OLED is, is a really good technology in and to itself, but there are some things that plague it because the technology just hasn't grown as quickly as it was supposed to. Uh, and SUHD is actually able to surpass it on the things that it does do well. OLED produces the purest form of black imaginable when it comes to TV. As you guys can see from the SUHD, it's pretty darn good at producing that as well. Now, what OLED does to produce black is it sacrifices brightness. OLED is very expensive, comparable to SUHD. If I've got an SUHD next to an OLED on a retail sales floor, in a room like this that's lit like this, the black levels are going to show exactly the same. Only the SUHD is going to dwarf the OLED in terms of brightness. So when a customer is trying to decide whether they want to spend eight grand on this TV or eight grand on an OLED just because they read an awesome review about an OLED, this is going to show up much bigger in their eye than an OLED on a retail sales floor. If you're watching a movie on this TV, the motion clarity is actually infinitely better a little aggressive. It's much better on an SUHD than it is on an OLED. Because of that brightness issue that OLEDs have and the burn-in issues, if you guys remember plasma, you remember burn-in, OLED is more susceptible, susceptible to it than plasma. OLED's not actually able to maximize its motion potential. So the SUHD is in fact six times faster than an OLED. At the end of the day, motion clarity is a pretty important selling the picture quality story. So, we've got a lot more color. We've got a lot more brightness. We've got better contrast. We've got equal black levels. We've got better motion. We've got detail. We've got the ability to remap content to match our 10-bit color panels. That's a pretty impressive story right there, right? But that's just one part of the SUHD TV. We now get to talk about the interactive side of things. All right? Now you guys know what smart TV is. You remember back to the early days of internet at TV when there were two or three apps to connect to, and then there was a smart hub, and then there was a five panel smart hub, and everything had Wi-Fi built in, everything had web browsers. You were able to connect mobile devices to the TV and share content, right? What smart TV has become is what can I connect to, how quickly can I get to it, and how easily can I get there? 
And that's what we're offering this year uh, with our integrative experience. We are actually implementing an entirely new smart system into our TVs, not just the SUHDs, but all the way down through our smart TV lineup. This is something called Tiza, all right? This is Samsung's own homegrown, if you will, operating system. It's incredibly easy to use. It's very customizable. It is an open source platform, meaning that developers will be able to create content much more easily, and it will be adapted into the system much more easily than we've been able to in the past. So the options for customers will continue to be refreshed and reset. People will never get bored. They're always going to be able to find something new and something fresh that's going to appease what it is they're looking for. Now, in terms of connecting to devices, I've we call that convergence. I've got something on my phone or on my tablet that I want to see on my TV. I want to use my mobile device as a second screen and share the content playing on my TV to my mobile device. That's not anything new. We've been doing that for a while. But now it's gotten to the point where I can do it with one touch, one click. Before it was a whole set of process and a connection process. Now the devices are always searching for each other. One click and I'm in. Customized content. Look, everybody's into different things. There are people who are into sports, there are people who are into gaming, there are people who are into shopping, whatever the case may be. There is a vast array of content out there with Tizen, with our smart platform, that you will be able to connect to. Your question? Yeah, so you were saying something about the connectivity of it. Is it cross-platform? Like, can you use Apple products with it? You're about three slides ahead of me. Am I? I'll get there. Uh, there you go. Yes. <laughs> and ready for smart home. If you guys uh, followed CES at all, the CEO of Samsung, BK Yoon, uh, announced that in seven years, 100% of Samsung devices will talk together. That's everything from uh, large appliances to small appliances to wearables to TVs to tablets to phones to cars to whatever you can think of that Samsung makes. 100% of the devices will connect together. All right? And what we're talking about with Ready for Smart Home is that the Tizen platform will be able to be the centerpiece of all of that, and your TV will be able to be the hub of your smart home. And that's sort of a futuristic look at it. Now, let's talk about what it looks like. What is the smart hub for this year? You guys remember last year, we had five panels, actually the last two years, five panels of smart hub. One set for apps, one set for TV recommendations, one set for streaming recommendations, one set for games, and then one for multimedia uh, and social TV happenings. It was a great layout and it worked very well. But what we got back from that was people just wanted something simple. They wanted to go to one place, they wanted to get to their content, they wanted to get to what they were looking for, and they wanted to do it while they were still watching TV. They didn't want to have to do the little picture-in-picture -picture screen like we had in prior hubs. So this, what you're seeing right here, is a representation of what the Smart Hub is this year. And imagine, if you will, the, the scenery behind it is a football game or the program that you're watching. You hit the Smart Hub button on the TV, and this is what pops up. You're able to keep watching your, your regular program, but you get one bar across the bottom that's going to give you what you're looking for. You have a category for recent, which is everything that you're going to use on a regular basis. You have another category for featured, which is going to be content recommended to you based on other things that are popular or things that you like to view or things that you like to access. All right there, super easy to get into. Get more content, get it faster, get it easier. There is a search bar or a search feature built in. You know what you want to watch, whether it's a specific movie that you're looking to stream or there's a specific app out there, ESPN Score Center, but you don't feel like going in and looking for it. You're kind of lazy. You just want to get to something nice and easy. You've got a search bar right there. Just type it in. Bang, it's going to get it for you. <coughs> and again, these are all things that your customers will be able to show very easily on the sales floor to get a consumer excited about this and how easy it is navigate and get through. As far as multitasking goes, this right here, fast play return, this is one of my favorite features of Smart Hub for this year. If anybody's like me, you're kind of impatient, you hate watching commercials, you're watching a game, when the game goes to commercial, if there's not another game on that you can watch, you're going to go to YouTube, or you're going to go to Netflix, and you're going to start an episode of something, and you're going to watch it for five minutes, and then you're going to cut back to your game when it comes back on. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And then you watch till the next commercial. And then when the next commercial comes on, you have to relaunch the app, start the content at the beginning, fast forward to where you left off, and before you know it, your game's back on. Everybody follow in this situation? Okay, with this feature right here, Fast Play Return, you don't have to do that. You can go immediately from watching your game into Netflix, 
watching something and it picks right back up where you left off. Again, you want to talk about ease and you want to talk about getting to something easily and quickly and something that you can effectively demo on a sales floor to sell this product, that's it right there. You show a customer how they don't ever have to, or a consumer, how they don't ever, ever have to deal with commercials. You can go from streaming to live TV seamlessly and easily. That's something people are going to get excited about. Okay, convergence, connecting devices together. You guys are familiar with this, yes? You've been around long enough to hear some iteration of the term all share from Samsung or screen mirroring. This is continuing to build on that platform. But now, like I said, we have the ability to do it with one simple click. This was how we had to connect last year. This is how we can connect this year. All right, the mobile device and the TVs will auto search for each other. There's something built into the TVs this year called Bluetooth Low Energy, which means when the TV's turned off, it's not 100% of the way off. It's still emitting a Bluetooth signal looking for something to connect to. Now to answer my man's question in the back back there, what it is looking for specifically is a Samsung mobile device. And it is actually looking for a Samsung mobile device running a specific version of the Lollipop update to Android and an update to an internal process called TouchWiz. And as we speak, well, let's pretend that it's about two weeks from now and the Galaxy S6 has been launched. That's specifically what I'm talking about. Right now, the only device that's capable of it is the S6. Now, there are Lollipop updates coming for the S5, the S4, and the Note 3, and the Note 4, and there are the TouchWiz updates coming for it as well, but that's gonna happen probably over the course of the next two months. So, by middle of this year, anything that's an S4 or newer, or a Note 3 or newer, will have these features built in. You will be able to connect to Bluetooth Low Energy. You will have something called Quick Connect, which is the one, con one button connection between the phone and the TV, where you can start sharing content back and forth. You guys are familiar with that, with screen mirroring and smart view. One of the cool things that we can do this year is I've got a movie playing on my TV. I'm gonna go in the other room, I wanna take my TV with me, or I'm lying in bed, the TV's too bright. My wife doesn't wanna watch TV because she just wants to fall asleep, but I don't have any other way of watching that content other than on my phone. I can set up Quick Connect, send the content from my TV to my phone, and then I can shut the TV off. And it will still push the content to my mobile device using this Quick Connect feature and the Bluetooth Low Energy, which is pretty darn cool. The number one feedback we got last year about the Smart View feature was, well, when I take my content with me and I go in another room or I go outside, I don't want my TV to be on, I want to shut it off. Couldn't do it last year. Can do it this year. All right, I come home from the game I was just at on Sunday, I have a bunch of pictures on my phone, I want to send them to my TV and look at them on my TV. Can't find the remote for my TV, my TV's off. Good thing I just bought a Samsung SUHD because it has Bluetooth low energy. My phone can turn the TV on and start sending pictures without the TV being on first. Couldn't do that before, we can do it now. Again, you want to talk effective demos on the retail sales floor when you're showing that convergence piece. That's all built in right there. Now. For non-Lollipop running, non-TouchWiz updated Samsung devices, be it an Apple, be it a Windows device, be it what other kind of smartphone there may be, you can still do all this, but you're using SmartView 2.0 that we had last year. You won't have the Quick Connect features, you won't have the Bluetooth Low Energy uh, connection capabilities, but you will have the content sharing ability. So you can mirror still. Yes. You can mirror back and forth. But you have to download that smart view app. Correct. 2.0. 2.0. Yeah. The other thing that you'll be missing is this right here. This, again, is part of the whole Quick Connect feature. This is called Briefing on TV. And this is something that whenever we've shown this in the past, whether it was at CES, we had an entire booth about half the size of this room dedicated to just this feature at CES. So who here uses their phone as an alarm clock in the morning? Yeah, me too. Happens all over the place. What this is, is this is your TV acting as your alarm clock, but it's triggered by an alarm on your phone. So you set your phone alarm before you go to bed. Your phone is connected to your home network 
your Wi-Fi, so is your TV. All right, this is how this has to happen. This doesn't happen with the Bluetooth network. The alarm goes off on your phone, sends a signal through your router to your TV. It turns your TV on to whatever you were watching last, and then it pops up this overlay right on the edge of your TV that's going to give you your current time, weather conditions. It's also going to tap into your calendar on your phone and pull all of your appointments for the day and put them up there on your TV for you. So rather than having to wake up to the blaring sound of uh, whatever's on your phone, you can wake up to Mike and Mike on ESPN radio. That would make me happy. Uh, or whatever you turned your TV off to last night. So pretty cool feature. Again, this happens over your home network. So even if your TV is downstairs and you wake up to whatever you wake up to upstairs, you can set the alarm on your phone. It's going to turn the TV on downstairs. So when you come down, the coffee's brewing, your TV's already on, and you can see what's happening outside and uh, what you have scheduled for the day ahead. Again, one of those things you can show this on the retail sales floor so easily. It might sound kind of silly, but when you see it work, you're like, hey, I kind of get that. That's pretty cool. I think I might like that every day. And it's something that salespeople can demo to consumers that they think, I got to have it. I don't know how I live without it before. In fact, I need two TVs, one for my bedroom and one for my living room. And then we're all happy at the end of the day. So moving into content. Again, we talked about there's, there's something out there for everybody when it comes to content in Tizen. Anybody a gamer here? Anybody here at PlayStation? <laughs> little thing that, uh, that Sony does pretty well. Anybody know what PlayStation Now is? It's their console-less, cloud-based system. Streaming gaming. Right now there's about 200 titles in the PlayStation Now library. Samsung Smart TVs in 2015 will have PlayStation Now built in, which is pretty darn cool. I'm not a gamer, I think it's pretty cool. The UHD and SUHD lineup will have it by May, the remainder of the smart TV lineup will have the second half of this year. But since we're going to sell only US UHDs and UHDs this year, we won't worry about the, the 1080Ps, right? Question. Kidding. Yes. Why, why would you want now on your TV when you already have it on PlayStation and the PlayStation? Because a lot of people don't want the console. Now you don't have to buy the console and buy the games. Hmm. You just need a subscription. So you just need a controller. Yep. Yeah. Dual shock for and you have to have the PlayStation Now subscription. I think it's 20 bucks a month. So um, we still have recommended content like the On TV and the News On, which is the TV. Somebody have a question? I feel like I was talking over somebody. Okay. Um, we have apps. There will literally be hundreds of apps available throughout Tizen from video streaming and audio streaming to games that you can play, news. There are shopping apps, whatever it is you want, you're going to find it there. Yes, there's still a web browser and all the smart TVs. Uh, and then into the more content side of things, up there on the top you see Samsung Sports Live. This is a pretty cool thing. If you're a sports junkie, especially if you're into fantasy, uh, you can be watching your game and you have an overlay app up there that's going to give you some pretty detailed and insightful stats into the games that you're watching rather than having to wait for the Fox ticker or the CBS ticker or the ESPN ticker to scroll across the bottom. You've got everything about your game right up there. And if you have no interest in watching sports whatsoever, you'd rather, we'll say, watch the Oscars every night of the, every night of the year. It's customizable to whatever it is you're watching. So if you're watching something like an award show, you know that half the experience of that is following what people are saying in the social world. Well, when you've got this app, it's actually called Samsung Extra, not Sports Live. When you've got this pulled up on the TV, you're watching your award show, and then it's tapped into Twitter. It's tapped into all the other social networks out there and pulling up comments that people are saying about what somebody's wearing or why they shouldn't have won that award, whatever, whatever people happen to say in those instances. Same thing for the news. Um, it will do the same thing. So that's a pretty cool way of getting more information, getting it quickly, and getting it easily. Again, this is something that your customers can have playing in their store uh, on their displays. And then down at the bottom in my content, that's just simply the ability to connect and share uh, external drives, external sources to the TV to get content playing on the TV. So, we've now talked picture quality and we've now talked the connected experience. But again, there are those people out there, there might even be some of you in the room here, who Picture quality, okay, you know, yes, that's important. Connected experience could care less about. What I really want to know is what's this TV going to look like in my living room? Is it going to add to or take away from 
all the hard work I've put, in, put into the design and the feel of my living room setting? The answer is, of course it is. Because Samsung doesn't leave any stones unturned. They've thought of all angles of the TV and all sides of the TV. And we've built a couple of very cool features in to make sure that whether the TV is on or off, it's going to look good no matter what or from any angle. All right? And we're going to talk about the curve form factor. We're going to talk about the new bezel design that you see here on the JS9500 series. And then we're actually going to talk about a design on the back of the TV from the 9000 series. Now, Curve TV reintroduced last year. Right? And there was a little bit of skepticism when Curve Panel first came out. How in the world are consumers going to be sold on Curve Panel TV when all they've heard about is Flat Panel TV for the better part of the last decade? And the answer to that is they received it really well. We began last year with two versions of Curve Panel TVs. We ended with about eight. And this year we're going to have even more. All right? So Curve Panel was a very big deal for us. Our UHD sales, we represented well over 50% of the market from UHD in 2014, and nearly 50% of our sales alone were curved panel UHDs. This year we're expecting that number to grow to almost 70%. So we're going to have a big push on curved panel. You're going to see a lot more of it. There's going to be a lot more options to sell. What do I get out of curved panel if I'm a customer? Why do I want something that's bent rather than something that's flat? Any of you guys here know the benefits of curved panel? Did you sit through this training last year? Yep. Yes. So it just provides a different viewing experience. It's meant to be more immersive, more cinematic like. It's about bringing that movie theater experience into the home environment. The curved screen has a much different effect on our eyes than a flat panel does. With flat panel, your eyes tend to lose a lot of what's happening on the outer edges of the screen. We focus in on the middle, and our peripheral view is a little closed off to that center portion of the screen. With the curvature in the left and right sides being, being effectively closer to us than the center of the screen, we're able to pick up the data that's happening on the left and right sides faster than in the middle. So we absorb more of what's happening and we absorb it all together. Think of other curved screens you've viewed in your life. And again, these are things that you can relate back to the people who are buying curved screens from you. Think of things like IMAX theaters, newer movie theaters, rides at amusement parks, planetarium even. They all use curved screens and it's meant for the same purpose as why we're curving a TV. To make you feel more immersed in what you're watching or part of what you're viewing on TV. Follow me there. Are the curved screens mountable? Wall mountable? Yes. Do they require special mounts? No. They mount exactly the same way that flat panels do. Alright. Now, auto depth enhancer this was something we had last year in one version of our Curve TV, which was the HU9000. Do you guys remember this feature? It's an area-based contrast enhancement program that provides a more 3D-like feel to 2D content. It makes objects in the front of the screen look brighter, objects in the, dark, in the back of the screen look darker. What our eyes see as bright, we perceive to be closer, more 3D-like, more depth. It was on one of our Curve TVs last year. It's in every one of the curved TVs this year. And that's a pretty cool little benefit right there. We also inter are introducing more sizes of curved TVs this year. Now as TVs get smaller, in order for the curvature to really take effect, they have to be curved more. So anything that's under 50 inches from the curved lineup is going to have a greater curve than the bigger screens, the 55s and up this year. The more curved it is, the more effect it's going to have. So we're having that optimized curvature to match the size. Now let's talk about bezel. So you guys are looking at a JS9500 series here, and you see this bezel, and it's, it's pretty impressive. It's nice and sleek, and in fact looks like the framing of a work of art. And that was the, the whole thought process behind why the bezel was designed this way. It's called the chamfer. Uh, you'll notice that it's actually pointed inward towards the TV. So what happens is the edge of the TV is actually sticking out. There appears to our eye that it's sticking out further than the panel. And this, again, adds another layer of depth to what we're seeing. Because we see the edge, and then the panel actually looks like it's back a little bit further. So our eyes are seeing more depth. Aside from the fact of when the TV is turned off, it's going to look pretty good. It's meant to look like a work of art hanging in a museum. Sounds a little cheeky, but 
but that's exactly how it's written and that's what the chamfer part of it means. So when you've got to sell that story, when you're trying to find that, meet that need of the customer, you've got the picture quality story, you've got the connected story, and you've got the design factor from the curve form factor, and then you've also got the bezel to talk about. Right with me? Now what does, what about from the back? I got this TV mounted on the wall, what's it gonna look like from the back? Aren't the sides gonna stick really far out and block my view? Well, no, they don't stick out that far. And in fact, when you get off center of access with a curved TV, your view actually improves. I'm standing at a pretty dramatic angle over here, and I can see every shade of color in that TV just as good as any of you guys who are sitting in the middle of it. That's because I've still got half the TV pointing right at me. Rather than a flat panel TV, which sends everything out into, out like this, the curved form factor is funneling everything more directly. So just like you would hear me much more clearly, much more loudly if I had a megaphone directing the sound directly at you, the curved TV is sending its signal, sending the picture much more directly at me than a flat panel TV. So not only is it better when I'm viewing it on the center of access, it's better when I move off to the side. All right? Now from the sides, when I'm talking about the 9000 series TVs, which is my 9000 or my 9 series TVs, my 9000 and my 9100 series, Again, Samsung has remembered all sides of the TV. And the back of this TV has something called a shearing design, which is a perfectly spaced array of vertical ridges, meant to make the TV look good no matter what. So somebody's got it mounted, they've got it on a stand, and they're worried about what it's gonna look like from the sides when people can see the back of it. No problem, we've got that covered too. It's gonna look pretty cool from all angles, all right? We've got something for everybody including those people who aren't quite ready yet to adapt to the curve form factor. They still want to stick with flat, whether they're going to have it on a stand or they're going to mount it. They just want to have that ultra slim profile. Not a problem. We've got their needs covered as well. The 8000 series, I'm sorry, the 8500 series flat panel SUHD looks pretty similar to the 9500, although it doesn't have the tilted in bezel. It does have the ultra, the thin, um, shiny bezel like that. It's just not the, the chamfer design wants to go with the, uh, the flat form factor, we've got that for them as well. Any questions on design? No? All right, we're going to talk content in just a little bit. So, digging into UHD TV a little bit now. So, moving from SUHD into regular UHD. You guys are familiar with what UHD is, right? Is there a difference if I say UHD or if I say 4K? No, when I'm talking to you, I'm talking the same thing. I'm talking about resolution, right? four times the amount of resolution as a full high definition TV or a 1080p. We go from roughly 2 million pixels in a 1080p to a little over 8 million pixels in a UHD TV. That's where the 4K part comes in. And what do I get out of UHD TV? Anybody? Why as a consumer would I be interested in it? Right? There's a whole lot more detail. The images are more lifelike. There's a whole lot more pop. If there's text on the screen, it's much easier to read because those pixels are so much smaller, it takes a whole lot more of them to create the imagery on screen. And that's going to give me a much improved uh, picture. One of the inherent benefits of all those additional uh, pixels is that I can fit a bigger screen into a smaller configured space. So put yourselves in the shoes of a consumer who's walking in the door a retail outlet to buy a new TV. You had a TV you bought four or five, maybe eight, ten years ago. You're buying a new one today. Are you buying the same size TV of the one you're replacing? No. Nobody replaces a 32 inch TV with a 32 inch TV anymore. Ex except in extenuating circumstances where it's going in a specialized cabinet or maybe it's going in a second bedroom or something. End of the day, everybody wants to buy bigger TVs today. The number one size TV sold last year at retail was 55 inches. And the trend towards larger screens, towards 60 and 65 inch screens, grew tremendously last year. 65 will probably be number one this year. All right? Everybody wants bigger TVs. Now think about that person who's coming in to buy a new TV for their living room. They had a 42 inch TV they bought five years ago. They want to put a 65 inch TV there. If you sit the same exact distance from a 42 inch TV to a 65 inch TV, is it going to look the same? No, you're going to have to back up a little bit from that 65 to maximize the viewing, the viewing benefit, right? That's because as that screen gets bigger, 
It doesn't get more pixels, more dots in it. It just gets more space in between the pixels. And your eyes pick up that space unless you move further back. If you've ever been in a retail store, you know this. And this is one of those things you can talk to your customers about. Like, look, you got big screen TVs. You know you take your customers and you walk them back a few steps before you have them look at it because it's not going to look good up close, right? One of the benefits of UHD TV is because those pixels are so small, like this here, I can get right up on the screen and I can't see the space between them. So if I'm putting this in my living room, you're sitting right here, you see it pretty well. If this is a 65 inch HD TV, it's not gonna look good. You're gonna have to move back another four or five feet. So as a consumer, am I gonna rearrange my living room or knock down a wall and move my couch back just so I can fit a bigger TV in there? No, I just wanna buy a bigger TV. I wanna get it home, plug it in, and I wanna watch it. With a UHD TV, you don't have to do that. You can sit closer to it because the pixels are so much smaller and you're still gonna have all the maximum uh, benefit from viewing all that detail. All right, bigger screens, UHD. What all these numbers are right here, this is talking about pixels per inch. So one line across the screen, and this is just kind of a full representation. If 55 inch is the magic number, uh, or the most commonly sold size of TV, 40, 40 pixels per inch is what's recommended to maximize viewing benefit. And on a full high definition TV, which is 1080p, when you get north of 55 inches in size, you drop off below 40 pixels per inch. But when you go to a UHD all the way down, you can go up to 85 inches and you're still well above that number. So as screens are getting bigger, people are buying bigger TVs, they wanna maintain above that 40 pixel per inch number, they gotta go with the UHD TVs. Everybody with me there? So, auto depth enhancer, we talked about this uh, a few minutes ago. This is a benefit from the curved panel TVs. Last year it was in one of them, this year it will be in all of them. So make sure we're talking to people about curved panel. We mentioned the auto depth enhancer feature. This is what's giving us a more 3D-like representation of 2D content. We also have something called pure color. This is going to improve overall color accuracy by increasing the number of adjustment points that the TV is doing on the color signal. This again was a feature exclusive to the 9000 last year. This year it will be on all of the UHD and SUHD TVs. So a feature that provides more accurate color. So big expansion on both of those additives. UHD upscaling. Anybody want to tell me why this is important? Because there's not a lot of content. Last year, that would have been the exact correct answer. This year, it's sort of a modified version of that. There's a huge content story to sell, but most of what we will watch from broadcast, and even a lot of the stuff from streaming, is still coming through in lower resolution format. It's coming through in 1080p, it's coming through in 720, or if you're watching DVDs, you're watching even lower than that, right? So when people ask or you get pushed back on what can you watch on 4K TVs, the answer is any right, because the TVs have the ability to upscale any resolution format to match the 4K pixel structure of the TV. We're all clear on that, everybody understands that, right? Now, upscaling is incredibly important. Not all manufacturers upscale the same way. And if you have, if there's a customer or a consumer who says, well, I'm gonna go to the wholesale store and I'm gonna buy a lower price TV because it's still a 4K TV, they're making a huge mistake. It is not going to upscale the same way. And this provides a pretty cool graphic of why upscaling is important. If you look at this right here, look at my 3840, which goes all the way to this line right here, 3840 by 2160, that's the resolution format of UHD TV. Go into the next box, which is this one right here, 1920 by 1080, that's full high definition or 1080p. And what this number in the corner represents, 25%, means that if I'm watching a Blu-ray disc on a UHD TV, the TV only receives 25% of what it needs to fill its pixel structure. It needs to create another 75% or upscale another 75% to give us all those 8 million plus pixels. What's more than likely happening, I'm watching broadcast TV, I'm only getting 11% of what I need to fill my TV's pixel structure. The TV needs to do 89% of the work. Upscaling is incredibly important when we're talking about UHD TV. And it's why your customers should be bringing in Samsung TVs to sell to their consumers so they're getting the most out of what they're purchasing. Upscaling is important and they can put any content they want on any one of the Samsung TV UHDs 
and they're going to show that the experience improves dramatically over what customers have come to expect from 1080p or high definition viewing. All right. Now to expand on what he said over there, there's not a lot of content out there. There actually is a tremendous amount of native format UHD content available today. Most of it is still coming via streaming, which we see over there as number two. From Netflix to Amazon Instant Video to MGO to Ultraflix, there's a lot of video on demand providers and streaming providers out there who are using or who are delivering UHD content today. And it continues to grow literally on a daily basis of what's out there and what's available. UHD Video Pack from Samsung, you guys are aware of what this is? We had two versions of it last year. There will be a third coming out uh, within the next couple of months. Like the second version, it will have 40 titles of UHD content loaded onto it. There will be a selection of both movies and documentaries. It will also be able to tap into MGO, which is a pay-per-view service, where you can download, buy and download additional titles to the UHD video pack. It costs anywhere from like 25 to 35 bucks to buy the UHD title. And it takes about five hours to actually download one of the files because they're so big. But another way of getting content. Uh, broadcast and pay TV operators, DirecTV, Comcast, they are already doing it. And all the other major players from within the, uh, the broadcast spectrum have all announced plans to deploy UHD content at some time. So it is definitely the way TV viewing is going. And it's why you'll see here in just a little bit that the uh, the lineup of UHD TVs has grown significantly over what we are now offering from the HD side of things. Any questions about UHD or 4K? How many more shades of color expression do I get out of an SUHD than an HD? All right, you guys are awake. So let's take a quick look at some of my models here. The 9500 that we're looking at right here, there will be three sizes, 65, 78, and 88 inches. Uh, we talked about it, I think it was just you two guys that are in here, the 88 inch just for point of reference at retail. Uh, UPP on that right now is about 24 grand. So they are, they are rather pricey. It is multi-zone full array, which is the main step up feature into the 9500. Meaning that the lights are behind the panel and they, there are lots of them and they are controlled in separated zones, which is going to give us that additional contrast and that additional black level, all right? So multi-zone full array is the purest, highest end, most expensive way that you can light a TV. And then tinted color panel, which all of the SUHDs are, the nano crystal backlight unit, which we talked about, pure color, uh, DCI-P3 is another conversation for another day. Peak illuminator, that's a software process that takes energy savings from dark areas, reassigns it to bright areas, makes the panel very efficient, very durable. Precision black, and an auto depth enhancer, these are all things that you have seen in the past. This is kind of new right here. You guys remember good old clear motion rate? Mm -hmm. And good old fashioned refresh rate? Mm -hmm. All right, we don't have to talk about any of those anymore. We are now just talking about a simple motion rate. All right? <clears throat> Motion, What's, are there any 240 hertz refresh rate ultra high definition TVs on the market today? No. There's a couple of manufacturers that like to say that there are, but there aren't. This is not 240 native frames of content. It's 120. It also uses 120 frames of black insertion. So you've got frame, real frame, black frame, real frame, black frame, all right? So there are essentially 240 frames per second being put up on the screen. 120 of them are real, 120 of them are blanks, which is how other manufacturers are doing it as well. They just market it as actual refresh rate, which it is not. The black frame insertion cuts down on um, motion jutter, and it's actually easier on your eyes. And with all the data, and all the pixels being so small and then resetting so fast in a UHD TV, there's absolutely no need for the 240 frames to be reset like there were with 1080p TVs. So make sure when you are selling this TV out that you're not calling it 240 hertz because it's not. None of the TVs that are UHD are. So it's 120 hertz. Native. Native. 
but it's motion rating because it is producing 240 frames. It's 240. Make sense? Convoluted. Sounds like it. Sounds like mm -hmm. real motion all over again. <clears throat> Sounds like it's unnecessary. Yeah. It's not needed anymore. The 240 is not. Yeah, it's not. The conversation is so, not necessary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they are 3D, uh, it is still active 3D. The Tyson operating system, which is the new platform. Uh, 802.11 AC Wi Fi, which is a pretty big deal. So the antennas in these things are pretty strong for Wi Fi. Uh, smart interaction, this is the only TV this year that will have the camera built into it. Um, and of course, the voice control, which is accessed through the microphone button on the remote. Octa core processor, the 9000 series which will be the nine, uh, the 9 series TVs, which is the 9000, 9100 series, and the 9500, have octo-core processors. Um, and then the uh, smart TV with easy conversions and the One Connect box. Are you guys familiar with what the One Connect box is? See, mostly yeses. Any noes? No. Okay. So we introduced this a couple years ago with, uh, when we launched UHD TVs. The connected ports on the TV have all been removed, and they're placed in an external box. So the evolution pack? It is, yeah, but it, it's it's an all-encompassing package. So this is the evolution kit for the UHD TVs. It is also where all the HDMIs and USBs are. So there's two outlets on the back of the TV, one for power, and then one for this cable to run the box into the TV. It gives it a cleaner integration, it's easier to set up, and it's much easier on the evolution part of it. Now I don't have to take the TV off the wall. All I've got to do is remove the pack and plug everything in and out of it. So pretty cool factor there. It also removes a lot of the heat producing boards out of the TV. If you pick that box up, it gets hot. The back of the TV doesn't get nearly as hot as it used to. So it's a better, cleaner environment for the TV itself. Moving on down to the uh, 9100 series TV. This is in 78 inches only, and this is a non-3D TV is SUHD, it does have all those benefits. And this is also the beginning of our edge lighting uh, versions of TV. So the lights are removed from the back of the panel in the 9500 series and put on the edge uh, for the 9100 series. Everything else is pretty similar. 9000 series is very similar to the 9100. You just got more sizes and you also have 3D capabilities here. For whatever reason, there is no 3D in that 70. And then when we drop down into the 8500 series, this is where we go to our flat panel. Again, this is edge lit. We got a lot of size options from 48 inches up to 78. Uh, and then we also drop down to the quad core processor here. Still SUHD, still 64 times the amount of color expression, still the extreme brightness, the additional contrast, all the good detail. Just missing the uh, octa core processor and the multi-zone full array lighting. And I just sort of gave you all that. This is just showing a step up how you're selling out of uh, UHD and into SUHD. Begins with the 64 times color expressions, right? Moving into the 9000 series, we pick up octa-core processor. Moving into the 9500 series, we then pick up uh, the multi-zone full array lighting capabilities. Full grid right here. This is everything that's SUHD and UHD. You can see the lineup is pretty big. Uh, I'll make sure Mark gets copies of this. If you guys don't have them already, or at least have it all onto one nice clean sheet, I'll make sure that you get copies of this. And then looking at the 1080p sheet, much smaller, much less exciting than what we were offering from the uh, UHD side of things. So UHD is definitely the main direction that TVs are going, and then SUHD is hopefully you know, where the top end of things are going, and we'll see a lot more from this as we move forward. Any questions about TV in general? Awesome, you guys are making it easy on me. Got a little bit of time to talk about some audio products. Uh, focusing in on sound bars, which is the biggest part of what we do from the audio side of things. We've got more curved, sound t uh, more curved TVs this year. We're going to offer more curved sound bars to go with them. Last year we only, we had, there were two last year. This year we're going to have a couple of more. Um, and they're going to have different offerings, different things that, uh, that they produce. <clears throat> Included in that is different curvatures of sound bars meant to match the different curvatures of the TV. So I mentioned before that we're going to have some smaller screen curved TVs that are going to be more curved than the big TVs. We're going to have sound bars that match their curvature as well. This is a sound bar from last year from the curved version, so it does not fit perfectly on this stand. 
But if this were a J series soundbar, it actually slides right on top of the stand, but it's right up underneath the TV. So it gives it a nice, uh, clean profile, a nice, clean look. If the TV is going to be mounted, the Curve soundbars actually come with a mounting bracket. So they can go up underneath the TV. You have that solution there as well. J8500, which is going to be our top end soundbar. Uh, a couple cool things that this is going to offer this year for those people who are willing to spend the money on expensive soundbars. It does have nine discrete channels of audio, including a center channel dedicated to voice and left and right side firing speakers meant to provide a more encompassing surround experience. We are using a newly designed subwoofer. So you can see the sub is down there on the bottom of the silver box. The sub is much more slim this year. It can actually be lied down depending on the space configuration that it's going into. <clears throat> The uh, driver itself in the sub is called a mad woofer, which is multi-air gap, moves air more freely, that provides deeper and tighter bass. It's two and a half decibels higher, or lower, depending if you want to say it that way. And then um, we're using a new short ring inside of the speaker driver configuration itself that's going to reduce distortion uh, in the audio that we're hearing from the speakers themselves. So a lot of improvements. Over the last couple of years, Samsung has made leaps and bounds with their audio production and what we've been able to do, especially on the high-end uh, high product. So we're really excited about what that's happening, what, what is coming with this stuff this year. We are using, this is what happened in the past with, sound, with our sound bars. This year in the 8500 series, we are using one amplifier per channel. That's how we're able to get the nine discrete channels out of that bar. So each of those drivers will have its own amplifier. And then we uh, actually have improved the audio restoration from streaming content. So a lot of the highs that are knocked out from compression are actually restored when we play them. So anything that we are streaming or playing in MP3 format playback is going to sound a whole lot better this year than we've been able to in the past. New offering this year, this is a 4.1 channel configuration from Soundbar. Pretty cool uh, little package deal for anybody interested in bringing surround sound into the home. Having fronts and rears, you've got the Soundbar and then the sub that it comes with. And then it actually comes with two wire, wire, excuse me, wireless rear speakers that connect into a wireless kit. You can place behind the, uh, the listening position so you do have front and rear audio. This is going to be the J470 model which is pretty cool. I wish we would have come up with that before. And then for secondary rooms or smaller TVs, space constrained configurations, we have an all-in-one sound bar that is a 2.2 channel system. It has two uh, regular drivers and then two woofers built into it as well. So anybody who's looking to add a sound bar into their room, because even the TVs you put in your room should sound good, uh, or if you just don't have a whole lot of room but you want to have that additional audio offering, this is the solution for that. This is the J250. So we've got everything from small, all-encompassing to surround sound solutions, and then into the high-end nine, uh, nine discrete channel 8500 series. Our sound bars will work a lot better this year with our multi-room audio solution. You guys know Shape from last year. Um, I've actually got a bunch of slides coming up next that are about the Shape app, which I know you guys don't use, so we won't get into that very much. But um, you're going to see new offerings from the Shape speaker lineup. You're going to see something called the Ambient um, Omnidirectional Speaker, which is sort of egg-shaped, if you will. But it has the ability to produce 360 degrees of fully balanced sound. You know, if you put a speaker in one corner of a room, you listen to it over here, it sounds one way. You listen to it over here, it sounds completely different. This speaker is going to provide maximum listening no matter where you're sitting. It's Amazingly cool and sounds really good. It was actually one of the highest rated things we had at CES this year, so we're pretty excited about that. New Giga systems. You will see a couple of models carry through. The 8500 series, which is the all-in-one, will carry through to this year. The, uh, the 9000 series, the big boy, is actually bigger and better this year. It is growing, if you will, from 3400 watts to 4000. The speakers are going to stand about four inches taller. If you've ever seen one of these systems, they are massive. Uh, the speaker's about the size of that cabinet, and there's two of them. Um, it's got a newly designed head unit that has a set of bongo drums built into it. There's an app that will completely control the Giga system this year, from the lighting effects to the DJ effects to actually 
playing musical instruments on them. So if you've got any dealers that have Giga on display, they're going to want to want to bring in this 9000 and talk to them about the app because there's a lot of interactive things they'll be able to do on the sales floor uh, to grow that product category. So Giga is pretty awesome. Blu-rays, we are actually going to have some Blu-rays with a curved form factor to match the curved TVs and match the curved sound bars. Um, the home theater systems are going to have new speaker designs. There's new interfaces on them that make it easier to navigate your way through not only watching Blu-rays, but also through the smart features uh, and setting up the, um, the surround options that you have. So everything this year is geared towards customizing your system and making it much easier uh, to do. Any questions on any of that? Are all of the sound bars able to wirelessly connect to the TV or just certain ones? So that's called TV Sound Connect. The sound bars, uh, there may be one entry level model that does not have it, but I think all of them do. That's only going to work with the Samsung TVs that are only capable Samsung of TV. Sound Connect. Uh, so it's 3D there. Yeah. Which one where it starts? Uh, if it's 3D, it'll have Sound Connect. Okay. It's a, a pretty decent way to look at it. Because what the TV does is it Bluetooths the audio out, and the bar is able to receive it. That's why it's, it's not going to work with uh, with another manufacturer of TV. you got to do it the old-fashioned way and use an optical cable or an HDMI cable. Right. Good question. Anybody else any questions or anything else I can answer? Everybody's ready to go sell, sell, sell? Excellent. Well, Mark knows how to get hold of me. If uh, any questions do come up, if there's anything that you guys ever need, anything I can provide to, to help you uh, push one of your customers over the hump and get them to bring in more product, get them to expand their lineup, you know, I'm, I'm here for, uh, for that reason. And don't hesitate to have him reach out to me or you guys reach out to me directly. And I will make sure by the end of today or tomorrow I get him those product grids and uh, SUHD one sheeters. Thanks for giving me a little bit over an hour of your time this morning. It was nice to meet everybody, and go sell. Jason, thanks for your participation. We, uh, we appreciate uh, what you do for us, and 